Good afternoon. I hope you can all hear me. Gather closely here. We are in a sort of a wind tunnel here. Um, Jesus was best friends with a family from Bethany. There were two sisters named Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. Most of you know the story from John chapter 11. Mary and Martha sent a note to Jesus saying their brother was sick, but Jesus delayed coming to Bethany. And by the time he arrived, Lazarus had already died and had been dead four days in the tomb. But Jesus comforted Martha and said, it will be okay. Your brother will rise again. And Martha said, I know he will rise again on the last day. And then Jesus said the words that we just sang a moment ago. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believeth in me shall, shall never die. And he who liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And that is probably the verse that's spoken at more funerals than any other. Because that verse holds a glorious promise. It reminds us that when Jesus died and rose again, he defeated three great enemies. The first enemy that Jesus defeated is sin. And we heard a lot about that at the funeral. That we have sinned and fall short the glory of God and we should be punished. But on the cross, Jesus took our punishment. He did more than that. Jesus didn't just take our individual sins. He became sin. And when he died, sin died and the power of sin died. But he rose again on that first Easter morning and claimed victory over sin. The second thing that Jesus conquered at the resurrection was the power of Satan. And we have this idea in our modern age that Satan is somebody who wants us to have fun. But that's not true. The person that wants us to have fun is God, the person who created us. Satan is a force that is anti-life and anti-joy. And when Jesus died and rose again, he defeated the power of Satan and brought true life and true joy. But there's a third thing he defeated, and that's what I want to focus on this afternoon. The third enemy that Jesus defeated when he rose from the dead was the power of death. You see, we sometimes call that story the resurrection of Lazarus. But that's not what happened at Bethany. Jesus didn't resurrect Lazarus. He resuscitated him. He brought him back to life. Jesus gave him more life. But eventually, Lazarus did die. But when Jesus resurrected on that first Easter, he didn't die and come back. He died, went through death, and came out on the other side. You see, the life that Jesus gave to Lazarus in Bethany was the life that we have. We call that a preacherly life. It will grow old, it will grow weak, and it will grow die. And even if Jesus gave us more of that life, maybe we'd live another 50 years, but we would still die because that life is a life that runs out. But when Jesus rose again, he rose to a new life, an indestructible life. Jesus has life in himself, and he wants to share that eternal life with us. To be a Christian doesn't mean to become a better person. It means to die to this life that we might inherit eternal life. St. Paul explained it this way, that the first Adam, of whom we are all descended, God made Adam a living soul, but he made Jesus, the second Adam, a life-giving spirit. And so Jesus has life in himself, and he can share it with us. As Christians, we believe in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When God the Son said, yes, I will come to earth and become a man, what we call the incarnation. Some people think that Jesus was only agreeing for 33 years, but he wasn't. He was agreeing for all time. 
Because when Jesus resurrected, he did not go back to being pure spirit like God the Father is. Jesus still has a body. It is a resurrection body. It is a spiritual body, but it is still a body. And so while Jesus was on earth among us, he was fully God and fully man. And now in heaven, he is still fully God and fully man. When he became one of us, it was for all time. My friends, I can't tell you how many Christians, I used to think this when I was little, think that when we die, we become angels. That is not true. The church has never taught that. The Bible never taught that. You see, God created three creatures for his universe, at least three that we know of. First, God created the angels, and they are purely spiritual. And then he created the animals, the beasts, and they are purely physical. And then God created us, and we are the amphibians of the universe. We are fully spiritual, like the angels. We are fully physical, like the beasts. We are not. I am a Greek, and I love Plato, but Plato was wrong when he said, we are a soul trapped inside of a body. We are not. We are an enfleshed soul. We are fully physical and fully spiritual. And our eternal destiny is when we are in heaven with Jesus, we will have a resurrection body just like his. The only difference is our resurrection body will not have any scars. My resurrection body will not have any sinuses, and I will really be able to speak. I will not have to worry about being sick. Amen. So, now there is a brief period now when Dr. Matthew is pure spirit awaiting the final resurrection. There will be a brief period when we are unclosed. But our final destiny, at the end of time, we will have a resurrection body. Not just our soul will be redeemed, but our body will be redeemed. We say of Dr. Matthew that he has fallen asleep in the Lord. And when I was young and didn't understand enough, I didn't like that phrase, fall asleep, because I don't like euphemisms. I'm an English professor and I think we should speak the truth and not wash over it. I'm hairy, I'm not hirsute, okay? But as I studied the Bible, I realized that that is not a euphemism. When we say that Dr. Matthew has fallen asleep in the Lord, when we say that he is going to be laid to rest in a cemetery, and the word cemetery means a sleeping place, like the word dormitory, it means a sleeping place. When we say he has fallen asleep, we mean that literally. It is not a euphemism. The first martyr for Christianity was St. Stephen. And when Stephen died, the book of Acts says, and he fell asleep. The reason we say that is because his body is sleeping now, waiting for the moment when Christ will call and wake him up and his body will rise up to be joined together with his soul for eternity. That's why St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, the great chapter about the resurrection body, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We, not, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a flash, in the wink of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall rise imperishable, and we shall be changed. I don't know when the Lord is going to come again. If you are here when the Lord comes again, you will not die. You will go straight up. The rest of us will sleep until Christ calls our name and we are lifted up to the new Jerusalem, to a new heaven and new earth, and all is redeemed. Normally I would end there, but in honor of Dr. Matthew, I've got to go a little farther because I believe this is the way he would end the message this afternoon. I just quoted for you that beautiful verse, I am the resurrection and the life. But I left out the last few words. I didn't finish the verse, and it's not often finished, but I need to finish it now. He says to Martha, and by the way, that was the name of one of his daughter-in-laws, Jesus, it said, Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. 
he who believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That is how the verse ends. Do you believe this? And Martha answers, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who was to come into the world. What I read to you or spoke, I am the resurrection and the life, is not just a statement. It is a challenge. It is not just something to be listened to and understood with our head. It is something to be received with our heart. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Because if we don't believe it, it's just words. But if we believe it, then we will share in Jesus' victory over sin, over Satan, and over death, which is the final enemy. And then we can say with St. Paul, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, death, where is your victory? Pray with me. Father, we thank you again for the rich legacy of Dr. Matthew for his love and his joy that will continue to affect people like the stone that is thrown in the water. The ripples continue out. Father, we thank you that Dr. Matthew is not dead. He is merely sleeping, awaiting the day when his body shall rise and be joined together with his spirit. And he shall live there in a new heaven and a new earth. And then, Lord, even what the locust has destroyed will be renewed. We thank you for that victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.